Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the EDD Show. Um, in this video, I'm going to be giving an updated version of the installing a brand new hard drive into your computer. So once you have already installed the hard drive in your computer and you ensure that the cables are connected properly, the port is functioning correctly, and the hard drive is also a good hard drive, technically a new one would be good, um, we're going to start by going to disk management. I got to this window by right clicking start menu, disk management. However, mine opens up on a different monitor, so I'll drag it over. Alright, so as you can see, I have quite a few drives in my computer. Um, well, I got one that's partitioned out multiple times because it's a two terabyte. Then my other one terabyte storage, and then of course my solid state drive that contains my OS. I need to rename this to W10. Anyways, um, usually a new hard drive that hasn't been initialized with the computer yet, what you'd want to do is uh, usually right here, you can right click here or right click here, and there will be an option to initialize. Once you initialize, um, leave the default settings normally. Uh, once you do that, you'll come to this screen, and it'll have this. You'll hit New Simple Volume. So here you'll click Next. You're going to partition all of it out, probably, more than likely. Hit Next. If not, then change this to something different. Um, change this to, like, half of this number if you want to do, like, say if you have one terabyte hard drive and you want to have two partitions of 500 gig each, or 500 gig roughly, uh, just take this number and half it and type that in here, and then hit Next or if you want to do it differently however you want that's up to you then you hit next here you're gonna give it a letter I always recommend doing the highest letter in the alphabet because the first couple letters are usually used by USB ports um, eSATA ports if your computer has any and trying to take a look on the back of my computer Probably the fiber cut. Probably one of the fiber cables too. Well, no, no, not one of the fiber cables. I'm crazy. What am I talking about? It's too early in the morning. Anywho, you always want to pick something up here. So I'm going to pick T for test because I'm going to delete this again because so I don't really care. And then you hit next. Then here you'll give it a label. So I will call this test for YouTube. And. Allocation size, leave this to default. NTFS is correct. Don't change this to X, EXFAT. EXFAT will not allow you to move any file over 4 gigs into the machine. So, you don't want to do that. Uh, you can enable this if you'd like. Uh, I would only do this if you have smaller hard drives. But, like, say you have a 250 gig. If not, it doesn't really matter. Then hit next. Then once all this information is here, you just verify everything, everything looks good, hit finish. It will then be formatting, because that's initially what it does, it will format. Um, and then, there we go, T test for YouTube, and I got a notification on Windows 10 telling me that it has been added. So now, let me show you guys. So I opened up a file explorer window. And I got my T test for YouTube. However, the reason why I'm not using this hard drive is because it has recently gone bad on me. So I decided to use it as a test bit to show you guys how this works. Um, that's pretty much it. If you have any issues with this, just do remember that this is for normally for internal hard drives. I've heard some success stories for external hard drives. I don't really have one. I should, but I don't. <clears throat> um... Make sure your cables are good. If they're brand new, then you, you shouldn't have any issues. If it's an older computer, make sure your SATA ports that you're plugging this hard drive into is good. Also, make sure that your power supply unit is enough to support the extra hard drives. Usually with these pre-built computers that come from Walmart or Best Buy or TJ Maxx or wherever you got yours from, usually they're designed to only work with the equipment that you have inside so if you've already added a graphics card on top of all this before you've done this this may or may not work 100 percent for you so make sure you have sufficient power supply to do this um 
So those are the only things you really need to look into. It's just power supply, SATA ports good, because sometimes SATA ports do go bad. I have bad one. I have a couple bad ones in my in my on my motherboard, and this computer is about four years old. So and it came like that out of the box. Did I care at the time to re send it back and get a new one? No. Should I have? Yes. Always, 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 if you receive faulty equipment brand new, always take it back and tell them that the equipment is faulty. And and add a request for an exchange or a full refund if an exchange is not possible. Um, usually with Newegg and Tiger Direct, they're pretty good on that kind of stuff. Whenever you receive faulty equipment, they usually just ask you to pay for the shipping, for the return on the shipping. And they'll usually send you a new one as well. I have had success with that before. So anyways, if you guys have any questions... Leave any comments in the in blah. Leave your comments below the video, and I will try to get to you guys as soon as possible. Um, I have been very busy with other things, so. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.